Hello, you fool, I love you. Come join the joyride. This is TOC News Tonight. It's 8th September 2015 and I'm your host PJ Thumb. Joining us tonight is Professor Chua Bing Huat, Head of Sociology at the National University of Singapore. We begin tonight with our ongoing coverage of General Election 2015. Now, we've had a generally good election. There have been some xenophobes, but overall, we've avoided personal attacks and we focused on the issues, debating things which are important to Singaporeans. Then last night, this happened. I have just one message to send to the SDP. In the PAP, we do not have a tradition of backstabbing our mentors. Dr. Balakrishna, your dubious and insulting comparisons to Greece were bad enough. But you had to go talk about history. You had to come into my house. And all I can say is, somebody gonna get a hurt real bad. Lee Kuan Yew has made his entire career out of backstabbing mentors and comrades. Take, for example, John Laycock. In 1950, Lee Kuan Yew returned to Singapore from the UK and John Laycock gave him a job at his law firm, Laycock and Ong, where Laycock was the senior partner. Laycock not only took on Lee Kuan Yew as his personal pupil, but paid him $500 a month, which at the time was over five times the median salary. When Laycock heard about Lee's marriage to Kwa Geok Chu, he also gave her a job and paid her $500 a month. In 1951, Laycock asked Lee Kuan Yew to be his election agent for the general election, and Lee agreed. Laycock later allowed Lee to take on cases for the trade unions, the cases which would make Lee's name, for free. He allowed Lee to use his office for receiving and sending sensitive mail. He let Lee use his admin staff for political activities. Laycock made Lee a partner in his firm. How does Lee Kuan Yew repay all this? Does he support Laycock in the 1955 election? No. He starts his own political party, and in his campaign speeches, he openly attacks the European establishment and criticizes them very heavily. Less than a few months later, Laycock would ask Lee Kuan Yew to leave his company. Oh, Devon Nair. Devon Nair was one of the founding members of the PAP. Devin Nye is supposed to be Lee's comrade in the PAP, but Lee Kuan Yew sees him as a threat. And so, in the 1955 elections, Lee Kuan Yew sabotages Devin Nye's campaign. Devin Nye is supposed to have helped ferrying his supporters to the polls, but Kwa Geok Chu denies the use of those cars to Devin Nye. And so, Devin Nye loses Farrah Park by a tiny margin. And in his autobiography, Lee Kuan Yew wrote, Devin Nye lost, and I was greatly relieved. Remember, Devin Nair is a fellow party member and his comrade. Oh, Lim Chin Siong. Lim was assemblyman for Bukit Timah and one of three PAP members of the Legislative Assembly. Lee also sees Lim Chin Siong as a rival in the party. In 1956, the Lim Yu Hock government accused Lim of saying Pa Mata, or beat the police, in a speech that preceded a riot. Lee Kuan Yew was sitting on that stage behind Lim Chin Siong at that speech. He knew that Lim Chin Siong had specifically told the crowd not to beat the police. But in the assembly, when Minister Chu Sui Ki announces that Lim Chin Siong has been detained without trial for saying Pa Mata, Lee Kuan Yew does not correct Chu Sui Ki, nor does he condemn Lim Chin Siong's arrest. Before the 1959 elections, Lee had promised to release all political detainees from prison if the PAP won the elections. On 14th May 1959, a month before the elections, Lee met with the British colonial governor, William Good. To Good's astonishment, Lee told him that his intention was to release only six leading detainees. He had no obligation to the rest of his party members who were in prison because they were his rivals within the party. And so, quote, he had no intention of releasing any others, unquote. Or Tuku Abdul Rahman. Malaysia's first Prime Minister. From 1961 to 1963, Lee is working with Tunku Abdul Rahman to create Malaysia. But the Tunku keeps complaining to the British that Lee keeps trying to stab him in the back. As it becomes clear that Lee is trying to manipulate merger with Malaysia to save his own political career and to destroy his political opponents in Singapore, the Tunku gets angrier and angrier. 
At one point, the Tunku says, and I quote, he was highly offended by Lee's deceit. He derided Lee as spineless. The Tunku declared, I can never trust that man again. Later, the Tunku says, and I quote, Lee is a thoroughly untrustworthy man. He added, I cannot work with this fellow. I think we had better carry on with Malaysia without Singapore, unquote. Or Go King Sui, who was Lee's economics tutor in Raffles College and after 1959 was his finance minister. In November 1962, Lee is about to arrest all of his important political opponents and detain them without trial. But Lee is worried that this will affect his popularity and make him really unpopular. So Lee actually suggests to the British that before the arrest, he would resign as Prime Minister, leaving Go King Sui, who would succeed him as Prime Minister, to take the blame for the arrest, thus allowing Lee Kuan Yew to escape blame and return later as PAP's and Singapore's saviour. Or oh, take To Chin Chai, founding member of the PAP, great fighter for our independence, the head of the committee who designed our national flag, the steel spine of the PAP who held it together even as it split twice in the 1960s and threatened to split a third and fourth time over merger and separation. After a series of massive policy failures in the late 1970s, for which Do Chin Chai was not actually directly responsible for, Lee Kuan Yew kicked him out of the cabinet in 1981, much to Do's dismay. He stayed on in parliament to serve the people, and as a backbencher, he clashed with his own party on, among other issues, the pace of its leadership renewal, the Medisave scheme, and the elected presidency. In the 1985 budget debate, Dr. Do Chin Chai passionately criticized the CPF contribution, which was then 50% of wages, as a heavy imposition on employers. But then Minister of State for Trade and Industry Lee Hsien Loong stood up and rebutted Dr. To vigorously. But in 2012, after Dr. To had passed away, Lee Hsien Loong wrote, and I quote, But as it turned out, Dr. To was right. The economy soon went into a steep recession and by the end of the year, this government had concluded that CPF rates were too high and indeed needed to be cut. Finally, Devon Nair again. Despite everything, Devon Nair stood by Lee Kuan Yew through thick and thin, turning his back on his old comrades to stand by Lee. He was a true friend to Lee, and in 1985, Devon Nair was forced to resign from the presidency in very unclear circumstances. Lee could have left it at that. We could have just had Devon Nair go off quietly into the sunset, but no. Lee alleged that Devon Nair was an alcoholic, a womanizer, a wife beater, that he was mentally impaired, using information that only could have come from Devon Nair's personal, private, confidential medical records. And worse, Lee put all this in a white paper in Parliament in 1988. Why? Devon Nair later wrote an open letter to Lee Kuan Yew, angrily attacking this, and I quote here, disgusting concoction of misinterpreted truths, half-truths, and untruths, not to speak of gaping omissions. He said, I have been a victim of a total smear, a furious attempt at utter demolition. We do not have a tradition of backstabbing our mentors. So Dr. Balakrishnan, no tradition of backstabbing in the PAP? You keep talking about how Lee Kuan Yew is the PAP. Well, if so, then backstabbing your mentors and comrades is the PAP way. Now, shortly after Dr. Balakrishnan's speech, this image was posted on his public Facebook page. When we checked again this morning, it was gone. And when we went to the PAP YouTube channel, the video of Dr. Balakrishnan's speech from last night's rally had been deleted. Clearly, he recognizes that he made a mistake. Now, why does that sound so familiar? Always be honest and upfront with your people. All of us will make mistakes. But when a mistake is made, just come clean and say so. But don't cover up. We'll be right back. <laughs> 